Hello, my name is Christian Mendoza, and in this video, we will go over how to review, edit, and enter data in the Die Info table. First, I want to go over the areas on the Takeout program of focus for the machine programmer. We have Open Existing Project, Create Sawhole Locations, Project Information, Die Info, Update Die Info, Sync, and finally, Anchor Types. The locations of all these are circled in red in the picture on the right. Now, the first step is to open the takeoff program. You will have to open the correct database according to what release you are programming by clicking open an existing project. If you need a refresher on how to do that, please go back and watch the video how to locate a release of takeoff program. Once you have the program open, you will then click create sawhole locations. Doing so will overwrite all hole information. Therefore, you will only do it once and do it at the beginning. If you click on this after inserting data in the takeoff program, you'll be deleting all your work. Next, we will click on Project Information. Doing so will then open the following window on the left. In this window, you will have to type in the drawing prefix, which should match the callout for the shop drawings, which you can see an example of on the picture on the right. As you can see, the shop drawing callout is VHQ2, and the drawing prefix has the exact same name. Next, you will click on Die info. When clicking on the die info, the following table at the bottom opens up, which is called die info table. In the die info table, we have the part numbers for the job and the following information for each part. VDIM1, face width, HDIM2A, HDIM2, HDIM3A, HDIM3, HDIM4A, HDIM4, HDIM5A, HDIM5, and HTM2 extras and the handed box. Now, if you want, you can pause the video and read the definition for each word. Now, the handed box is checked in the takeoff program during programming because it causes problems for the layout when it's checked in the portal. You can see the handed box all the way in the far right of the picture. If you forgot what a handed and non handed part are, Please go back and watch the video, handed versus non handed part. Now, the rest of the information is not entered directly into the takeoff program, but instead, Tony enters the information in the portal. Tony gets a report every Monday that includes dies, which already has most of the information needed for the die info table. Therefore, after reviewing the report, Tony starts entering the information into the portal. Now, if you see the die info table blank for a part, it means that the information is not in the server or the information was not in the server when the takeoff program was created. Therefore, you must now click on the update die info button and then sync. That's how you will get the information from the portal to the die info table. If that doesn't bring the information in, please contact Tony. The update die info button is located here and the sync button is down here. The next two slides are examples on how to get the information you need for the die info table. As you can see, we have a horizontal, which is the image on the left, and we have a vertical, which is the image on the right. For Vans headquarters, it was required to use the four fasteners on the horizontal. That's why we have a W752126 dash four, the four meaning that the four fasteners will be used. Therefore, this part had to be added manually into the die info table, which I will demonstrate after the slide. As you can see, the image on the left, the horizontal has the dimensions and the appropriate callouts for the information needed in the die info table. This is what you will have to do to review every part in the die info. You will go down the rows and see that they are all correct. For example, you can see the dimension for HN2 is 1, and the die info table has 1 under the HN2 column. So that's how you would check if they are all correct. Now you see how we have HN2 extras and HDN5 extras. So as mentioned in the last slide, HDN extras are extra machining needed in the program. So as you can see, HDN2 and HDN5 are circled in green in the left image. Now these two holes land in the front of the vertical, which is circled in green in the right image. Now if you look at the detail, it calls out for an axis hole. And that's the HDN extra you need to add. The way you add it, is by putting in the name 
of the LDT created in CAMPLUS under the HTM Extra column. For example, HTM2 Extra has dash 6875 access H, which is the name of the LDT created for that access hole in CAMPLUS, and that's how you would check if the dimensions on the DIINFO are correct. Now I will demonstrate on the DIINFO table how to add W75 to 2126-4. Now let's go over how to manually add W75 2126-4. So first we're going to click on DIINFO. Doing so will open the DIINFO table. We are going to scroll all the way down. We're going to manually add W75 2126-4. four. Remember the four means that this horizontal is going to use the four fasteners. So now we're going to sort it. And we're going to look for it. Here it is. You see it's under the standard Invisa horizontal. The standard Invisa horizontal has three fasteners. As you can see, it has the HTM2, HTM3, and HTM4 area filled out. The W75 2126 4 is going to need the HTM2, HTM3, HTM4, and the HTM5 filled out. So, the first three aren't going to change. So we can just copy them over. 0.25, 1, and we're also going to copy over the extra machining we're needed, which we're going to need it here for HTM2 extras. Okay, and go down. 0.5, 0 0.375. See, this one does not need an HTM extra, so we just move on. And then this one's 0.375. And now we need to add HTM5. Now we could go back to the slide before and see what those dimensions were. So if we look at this slide, we see that HTM5 is 1 and HTM5A is 2 and a quarter. Also remember that HTM2 and HTM5 are going to need that extra machining for the access hole since they land in front of the vertical. So let's go back to the Dianfo table and add that. So here we're back in the Dianfo table. Remember HTM5A is 2 and a quarter. HTM5 is 1, and remember this is going to need that extra machining for the access hole. And that's how you manually add a part into the Dianfo table. Now we have a horizontal, but this time it's attaching to our core vermilion, which you can see an example of on the image above. As you can see on the die info table at the bottom, the part is called W75 2126 4 slash 5105. With the 5105 meaning it attaches to the W75 5105 quarter mullion. This part will also have to be manually added to the die info table, which I will demonstrate after the slide. So this is how you would dimension the horizontal when it's attaching to the corner mullion to get the correct dimensions for the H dims. As you can see on the image, we have new HDIMS and old HDIMS. The reason why we use the new HDIMS is because if we use the dimension for the old HDIMS, the holes on the horizontal will not align with the holes on the corners. So if we follow the new HDIM2, we see that it's calling out for 1.414. But on the Dianfo table, under HDIM2, we have 1.461. Same goes for new HDIM3. The measurement says 6.187. But on the table we have 6.234. The numbers don't match because we need to add a slight offset into the dimension. We do this in order to compensate for the pooling and movement the horizontal will have with the corner mullion when it's being fastened. Also, you can see that this horizontal does not have any HDIM extras. It's not because it doesn't require it, but because the access holes are done by hand by the shop, since the machines can create those access holes. So we don't need to program it. So that's how you would dimension a horizontal attaching to a corner in order to review the dimensions. And now I will go over how to manually add W75 2126 
slash 4 slash 5105, which is the horizontal attaching to the corner mullion. First, we will click Dynfo. We're going to go to Dynfo table, and once again, we're going to scroll all the way down. And we're going to manually add W75, 21, 26, 4, 5105. And now we're going to sort it. Then we're going to scroll down and look for that part. So, so we fill in the description attached to. W75 5105. And now we're going to fill in the Dynfo table. We we'll have to fill in the HTM2, HTM3, HTM4, and HTM5 since this is going to have the four fasteners. Now let's go back to the slide to see the dimensions again. So here we have the image again. So remember, we're not going to use the old dims. We're going to use the new HDMs. So we have HDM2 and HDM3A. The new HDM is going to be for this one and this one. And the new HDM3 is going to be for this one and this one. Everything else is going to stay the same. HDM2A, HDM3A, HDM4A, and HDM5A. As you can see here, they stay the same. Quarter, 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 two and a quarter, two and a quarter. The only things that changed were the HTM2, HTM3, HTM4, and HTM5. Now, remember that the HTM2 does not match with the new HTM2A because we added a small offset. So instead of putting 1.414, we put in 1.461. Same thing for 6.187, we put 6.234. So now let's go back to the Dynfo table and add it. So HTM2A, we have quarter HTM2. Remember, this is the one that's 1.414, but we added a small offset, so we're going to put 1.461. Now, remember that I also said that we weren't going to add the extra machining for the axis hole when the horizontal attaches to the corner mullion because those axis holes are done by hand in the shop since the machines can do it. So move to HTM3A. This is a quarter. HTM3. We're not going to put 6.187. We're going to put 6.234. Now HTM4A. Two and a quarter. HTM4. Is 1.461. And finally, HTM5A, 2 and a quarter, and HTM5 is 6.234. And that's how you manually add the horizontal attaching to the corner. Next, we have the anchor types. When clicking on the anchor types, the window on the left should pop up. This is the area where you put the information for the anchors on the seal track. The information on this chart is what drives the information circled in red on the picture on the right. The description here is what drives this red circle. The distance, one inch and a quarter, is what drives the information in this red circle. We have to do one more step in the dying foot table when it comes to the anchors for the sit track, which I will go over next. So once you're done with the anchor types, you will go into dying foot. And the Dynfo table will open up. And on the very top, you will see these part numbers. These four part numbers have to do with your anchor holes. I have to fill up two columns of information here. The HTM2A and HTM2. HTM2 is your VDIM1 of your seal track minus the dimension of your anchor. So, we will look for your seal track, scroll down, which for this job is here, W75, 11, 16. So, your VDM1 for your seal track is 
Now to look for the dimension of your anchor A, since we're looking at 11.16, can hold A, so close this. We go to the anchor types, and we see anchor type A. Your distance is 1 inch and a quarter. So 5.91 minus 1 inch and a quarter, we get 4.66. So going back to the die info, so we see for 11.16 can hold A, or H dim 2, is 4.66 which is correct. Now, for your h dim 2 a we can't leave it blank, and we can't leave it as zero, because the program will read it. So, we put in the smallest number possible. I put four zeros before the one, but if you want, you can put more. The more, the better. So, you would just do the exact same thing for the rest. So, we have 11.16 can hold m. We know that our v dim one is 5.91. So we have to go look for the dimension, an inch and a quarter. So it's the same thing, 4.66. And there it is. So the h dim 2s are all the same, 4.66 for all. And that's the extra step you have to do in your Dynafo table when working with anchor holes. And that's how to review, edit, and enter data in the Dynafo table. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.